So this video is going to give you a much more in-depth look at our feedback suppressor. So we want to start by taking a closer look at the features and the programming of the feedback suppressor. Let's do this by double-clicking on the feedback suppressor icon located here. So let's start programming the feedback suppressor by engaging five filters. Once we've engaged the five filters, we have a couple of options on how we actually program the filters. So when we're ready to start programming the feedback suppressor, we can highlight the filter that we want to engage just by simply highlighting the filter and using a click and drag method here. We can also use these filter modes down here to make whatever adjustments that we want. For example, we can actually turn filter 1 into a floating, restricted, or a manual filter. We can change the type of filter from a notch to a parametric. We can change the frequency here. And we can also adjust the frequency level and bandwidth. So by engaging filter number two, we can use the same methods. Either we can use a click and a drag method, or we can change the filter parameters just by using these bandwidth, level, frequency, type, and filter modes down below. We would continue doing this with all of the filters that we have engaged in the feedback suppressor. Once we have all the parameters set for these five filters, we can go ahead and lock these filters in place. We can also then engage filters 6 through 12, and we can keep these as a floating filter, which means that as feedback is perceived in the system, these filters will capture that feedback. One of the main features of the feedback suppressor is to capture feedback live when it's happening. For optimal audio quality in your project, it is best to capture as many potential feedback frequencies as possible and copy them into a parametric EQ, leaving only one or two feedback filters floating to capture feedback in a live situation. Leaving multiple floating filters active during a live performance could hinder the overall sound quality. One of the things that we have the ability to do is copy this function. We can then go ahead within the actual DSP, we can actually and open a parametric EQ and we can paste those filters here. We can then come back to the feedback suppressor screen, unlock all the filters and flatten them. This will allow the feedback suppressor to have all 12 filters available to lock feedback during a live performance. One of the key features of the feedback suppressor is to detect feedback during a live performance. Well, we want to be able to set the detector parameters. So let's say that we want to make this in a, in a much more sensitive manner. For example, if you are in a spoken word situation, you may want to make this feedback suppressor a little more sensitive so that it picks up those frequencies much quicker. In a live music situation, you may want to have that filter released on a much quicker basis. So you would actually want to have a much shorter float time. So feedback suppressors are designed to go in any channel where there is a microphone that will be active. So let's take a look back in the DSP channel and figure out where we want to place this feedback suppressor in the DSP signal chain. So here we are at the DSP chain. So you'll notice that I have the feedback suppressor in each of the input channels where I have a microphone designated. You will also notice that in the other channels where I have an iPod, a CD player, a DVD player, or any other line level signals, it's not necessary to have a feedback suppressor. Feedback suppressors are a very valuable tool. So now you have a much better understanding of the programming and the features of the feedback suppressor. For more details on other DSP programming, please consult the Ashley website at www.ashley.com.